The transition from circuit 6 to circuit 7 requires its own section. This talk so far has aligned fairly well with Robert Anton Wilson's version of the 8th circuit model found in his book Prometheus Rising. But now I'll lean more into the yogic aspects of 8th circuit yoga and Jung's mystical work. I call the transition from circuit 6 to circuit 7 the numinous. Numinous is a word that Jung often used to describe an experience that evokes strong religious or spiritual feelings. These feelings indicate or suggest the presence of a divinity. Peter Kingsley says the word numinous conveys a sense of the sacred and can be understood as the experience of the impossible in our lives. So far, everything that's been covered in this talk has been somewhat within the boundaries of normal public discourse. A few topics that I've covered may be on the fringes a little bit, but one can stretch mainstream science and psychology to cover it all in a reasonable way. This section begins the journey into what I've concluded is the key to mystical and esoteric traditions spanning from prehistory to the present. And here things get far more unreasonable and irrational. I can't objectively back much of this up. The distinction between subjective and objective is now blurred to the point of meaninglessness. When the highest circuits are activated, our experience of the world seemingly steps out of space, time, logic, and reason as we normally know it. And we seem to tap into something else, another way of living. To be honest, for some, this is kook or weirdo territory. And I have to agree, it's kooky, but that doesn't make it untrue. So to quote Goethe in Faust, it is with reluctance that I disclose this higher mystery. People nowadays have such hopelessly muddled ideas about anything mystical or have such a rationalistic fear of it that if a mystical experience should ever come their way, they are sure to misunderstand its true character and do anything to protect themselves against or just depress its numinous reality. Knowledge of the highest circuits is sort of hidden in plain sight. In every generation there are a few people that attempt to bring this knowledge to the public's attention but are ignored. Many have been condemned to death. Those that have gained popularity have often been misunderstood or misrepresented by others. Jesus of Nazareth, for example, whether he was a, an actual person or a fictional character invented by a group of Jewish mystics, or perhaps a combination of both, seemed to know these secrets. Some of these secrets he shared widely and disguised them as parables. According to both canonical and extra-canonical biblical sources, Jesus kept most of his important teachings to an inner circle. He talks about scattering seed in various locations, but the seeds only grow when they reach fertile ground. He was aware that very few people would be fertile ground for his teachings. The same mentality can be encountered in many esoteric traditions and secret societies throughout history. These groups of people felt the need to keep some mystical knowledge secret. Now this all sounds like the Da Vinci Code or some conspiracy, but it does seem to me that there is in fact an esoteric secret, a mystical idea or fact that has been on one hand suppressed due to fear of condemnation and misrepresentation and on the other hand symbolized and encoded within mainstream religion. The secret can be found in the depths of the unconscious. If you attempt a visit to the depths of your unconscious dark basement mind with full awareness of what you are doing, you'll likely encounter an archetype that will lead you to activate circuit 7 in a fully conscious manner.